Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now today is Sunday, so you know what that means. It's time to go around the net with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. So on the docket for today, we have the return of the Power Conference here. We have Wells Fargo follow up on the new Propel or Autograph card. We have American Express checking in with some gold card credit or coupon updates. And then we have Chase closing out the show talking about taking over the world of travel or at least pushing back uh, Capital One's advancement into the world of travel. So of course, if that sounds interesting to you, go ahead, press the subscribe button and let's get to work. Now we are going to bat lead off with Wells Fargo and the autograph card. Now we talked about this last week on the show. We do have some additional details here. So again, quick refresher, you know, Wells Fargo refreshing their whole credit card lineup. Uh, They're supposed to be coming out with four or five new cards. One of them was named the autograph. We already know that, but we didn't have any details behind the card. Well, now we have some additional details to share with you. So on screen, you have it new details it looks like it's going to launch july 13th of this year so pretty soon which is good because we haven't had any new cards to talk about in a while a welcome bonus here you're looking at thirty thousand points on about fifteen hundred dollars in spend in the first three months multipliers they did add a few different ones since the last time we saw this rumor so you're looking at 3x on dining transit travel streaming services gas and uh, phone plans so basically like cell phone stuff rise and sprint that kind of thing of course, one uh, one x back on all their purchases. No annual fee, no foreign transaction fees, and you do get the Visa signature benefits as well because this time it's not going to be an Amex card. It's going to be a Visa card. Now, what's more interesting, again, is these are rumors, though. If you go over to this Wells Fargo's rewards section, you can actually use this drop down and filter to Wells Fargo autograph card. So again, we know a card named Autograph is coming, right? It's in their drop down. I can put the link down there if you want to mess around that uh, that page below but there you go again still rumors for now but it looks like it's getting tightened up has been at least you know quote confirmed by people who work for wells fargo on reddit now overall you know i think this is basically propel version two which is a great thing because that's a lot of 3x multipliers on one card now it is also interesting that it says thirty thousand points for the sign up bonus versus like cash back so it's really yet to be seen how Wells Fargo builds back their program. You could earn Wells Fargo points before, and they had their own mini trifecta, if you will, that people really liked it because it was free, which is, you know, not common uh, through a lot of trifectas. So people like that one. Of course, the active cash is a cashback card. I'm still not convinced cashback is in the way forward through Wells Fargo. If you'll take a look at it, active cash at catch all at 2%, built rewards, which is a really nice pickup because you can get 1% back on your rent, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but you don't get anything on rent now so one percent better than no percent and then you bring in this powerhouse three percent card there now i can say that i recently picked up a wells fargo business card or business uh platinum card uh, as part of like opening a checking account bonus so if you're interested in checking account bonuses by the way i can link you down below to my new channel where we talk all about checking account bonuses um so that's something of interest to you feel free to check it out um, but anyways when i set up that card because this is my first ever wells fargo card they actually had me choose the reward structure i could either go points or cash back and cash back would auto redeem into my account so i did pick cash back so you know, I'm not sure if that's going to be their new setup where you have to pick in the beginning or not. Again, we need more details, but you know, the framework is at least coming together with Wells Fargo. So, you know, despite how we might feel about them, I'm still excited to see this because one, talking about new cards is fun, and I want to see how competitive they are. Again, they're like the second or third largest bank in the country behind, I think they're third behind Chase and Bank of America. So they should have enough firepower to do this. But of course, let me know what you think about this down below. Now, of course, we move on to American Express next up, specifically the gold card. So this time we were talking about that dining credit on the Amex gold card. So, uh, you know, you're probably familiar with it. It's $10 a month. It does not roll over. Basically, you use your card at select uh, restaurants, and then you get the credit posted a few days later. Wells Fargo has dropped some partners, and they've added some, no, Amex, sorry, has added some partners and dropped some partners for it. So let's take a look at our revised credit. Now, unfortunately, it still is for $10 a month only. Can't do any better than that. But you can use it at Grubhub, Seamless, the Cheesecake Factory, Shake Shack, Wine.com is new, Milk Bar is new, and Gold Belly is new. Roost Chris is out, and Boxed is out as well. 
So overall, as far as the new updates go, it's still kind of meh for me. I mean, you know, I think there's enough places on there that you can kind of find, you know, a spot. You know, I've already seen folks in the comments saying, hey, can I go buy gift cards from wine.com or something like that? You just got to remember Amex is very sensitive to buying gift cards with credits and things like that, and especially more so with these partners because they almost have to act as a good partner and protect the partner contract that they're using, right? I'm sure the vendor wine.com in this example doesn't want to just, you know, spend their new customer acquisition budget on folks going out and buying gift cards or something like that you know so i would still probably be very hesitant to try it back when i had the gold card shake shack was my go-to but again you know it's make of it what you will it's not a bad thing it's just a change to be aware of i also believe if this is of interest to you you can still get really elevated offers on the gold card through that resi um, link so if i can find that i'll put it down below it's not a referral or anything like that but if you're interested in the gold and of course it always makes sense in year number one i still do think it is amex's best card so of course sound off below if, if uh, let us know if you've been eating, eaten at one of these uh places which one's worth checking out over the new the, the new options love to hear your thoughts because i personally haven't been to any of them so with that now we close out with Chase and we do have a few stories where we will spend the most of our time. First up, uh, transitioning from Amex and eating, we move into a quick chase hit, quick hit, which is their uh, DoorDash credit, right? So we're now, I believe, the start of the third month of them offering the credit. So it was April, May, and June. And as you remember, um, it's $5 a month, but in a somewhat nice uh, change of pace, you can stack those $5 every quarter. So it'll roll over for three months. And then if it, you were to go into July and not have used this $15, basically you would lose it. So just a PSA that if you still have the card, uh, standby reserve or one of the cards that gets the DoorDash credit, you now through June, you could use it to get $15 off something, which is probably enough to make it worth it versus just doing it in $5 increments unless you normally go to DoorDash. So quick reminder on that. Now, the main, main stuff for Chase is Chase recently had Investor Day, right? So on top of last weekend, the investors voting to not pay out Mr. Diamond his $52 million in options to retain him. Um, apparently, they were, they, the day went on and they still had a not awkward Investor Day, I guess. I would have loved to have been a part of that. Hey, no, you can't have the money, but let me tell you about the other things I'm doing for you. Anyways, Chase is basically doing what everyone else is doing and making a big push into travel, right? So what we have to take a look at is, you know, they're forecasting out a few interesting numbers for the uh, leisure travel market. And then, you know, their continued incursion into the travel space, if you will. So on screen, you have it. Again, this was what I'm calling Chase Travel or will be called ChaseTravel.com. But this was announced at uh, Investor Day. So Chase will launch a travel portal later this year. It's kind of like, a, I think it's going to be like, a standalone chase travel.com now the reason they're pushing this hard is because they have forecasted numbers so they're saying hey travel business is to hit about eight billion dollars in sales in 2022 and then in 15 billion by 2025. Now, US leisure travel, so this is like non business travel, just travel for the fun of it. They're saying, hey, one in every $4 spent is on a Chase card, which is not super surprising. And then the, the second stat here is one in every $3 is spent by a Chase customer. Now, in addition to that, we have kind of sort of more lounge news. Again, we know that they're going to open um, six Sapphire lounges. You have the locations on screen. Now, they did announce. Um, well, kind of not so much announced, but they did allude to three more, but we don't know those locations yet. I'll bet anyone here a dollar, Chicago O'Hare does not get a lounge because that's just how it goes apparently, but hey, maybe someone's finally going to do it. Anyways, here we have it. This is the main slide from the Investor Day deck that they showed. So we'll, I'll leave this up for a little bit. We can kind of talk through it because this kind of does show their, their strategy, so to speak, of what they've done. What they've done. You can see they've basically been making you know acquisitions, a lot of them that we've talked about here. Um, so at the top part, you have some interesting numbers. So say, hey, one in two affluent households have a Chase relationship. Um, nine travel co-branded card partners. One in four dollars spent leisure. We talked about that. 6.6 .6 million transactions through Chase Travel already. 2.4 million unique customers purchase travel annually on Chase. And then, of course, nine Sapphire Lounge locations awarded. So, again, those three mysterious spots have been awarded, but we don't have details just yet. Now, the bottom section of the chart here, you can see CX Loyalty. Um, CX Loyalty was the one running their uh, travel portal, their internal one, you know, through Ultimate Rewards. Then uh, they dropped them, went to Expedia, came back because I believe they purchased is part of CX Loyalty's portal to kind of build their own proprietary one. And on the other hand, they have Frost, which I'm not, I'll be honest, not super familiar with, but again, falls under their acquisitions as well. So there, I think that slide's interesting just to kind of show the formation of a strategy, if you will. I mean, again, it's no surprise that Chase cards are everywhere. I mean, 
at the point when they added like the the freedom flex and the freedom unlimited got points on travel as no annual fee cards and yeah that's kind of when they went all in and that's why i'm not super surprised that you know that much spend for travel is on a chase card because it it makes sense and it's a great way to get people in I kind of see this more so as a play to the masses, right? If I can get people in early up funnel and suck them into the, hey, well, if you like the travel portal, if you like this, why not check out the Sapphire Preferred or the Sapphire Reserve? Or again, as they mentioned, our other co-branded airline cards and hotel cards too, and get into uh, transfer partners, that whole thing. So it's actually a pretty good strategy. You know, it does have me wondering two things. I think credit cards have definitely gone committed, almost tripled down on travel and lounges, right? You know, because again, they're forecasting there's a lot of money going to be spent there. And there's definitely a customer base, a target demographic that they want. Again, to their point, you know, typically you're going to have more discretionary income if you're booking leisure travel, right? So it, it makes sense. I do wonder what that means for the world of cash bank though, honestly. Again, I go back to what if Chase, I think, leaves um, in place the uh, the pay yourself back feature. And they do have it on all the cards to an extent. You know, even the freedoms get like, you know, 1.1x back. But if they bolster that a little bit, then I think it will actually be a fine balance. And then you can still play a cash back game and then travel with Chase on occasion. Or you can play the mid-tier game with the Sapphire Preferred and travel more frequently. Or you can go all in with the Sapphire Reserve. And then, you know, perhaps let's not rule them out even coming out with another core travel type card, you know, down down the road of lifestyle, if you will, again, because they're going this uh, heavy into travel. But again, all speculation, of course, I want to know your thoughts on this and everything we talked about down below. But that has been the news, guys. So if you liked it, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, of course, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Right back here every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. And of course, I am over on Run on the Bank, the other bank account bonus channel. Um, every week, twice a week, actually posting uh, videos on how to make banks money into your money. It really makes a great partner with the credit card content. So if you're interested, again, I will link it down below um, but of course let me know what uh, other stories you've seen out there in the news what do you think about these are you finally going to go give wells fargo another chance you know i'm really curious to see how this plays out uh, but anyways guys that's going to do it for this one as always thank you so much for watching i'll talk to you very soon on monday